Okay, good morning, John, uh, and uh, thank you again for joining us. It's been about two weeks since we have last uh, had an opportunity to discuss politics. So how, how has it been going? It's been going really well. Okay, so U.S. Senate race. Um, you, you published a poll and uh, in an email I received where you promoted uh, this Facebook Live, you said the poll was controver or somewhat controversial. So why don't you tell us about the poll and then tell us whatever was con somewhat controversial. Sure. So what I did was I recently did a poll, and it was a commission poll. This poll showed that really now there are five candidates who plausibly have a case to make the runoff. And so Foster Campbell and Charles Bustani are leading the field, and Caroline Fayard is moving up in the polls. John Fleming has made some major movement in the polls, and John Kennedy has tumbled. Now, when we're talking about tumble, there's a couple things going on. He had been riding high in the polls until recently when a Southern media poll showed him in the upper teens. The interesting thing about that is a poll I did back in July showed Kennedy in the upper teens. The one I recently did shows Kennedy at 11. So kind of an interesting shakeup in the Senate race. And of course, with anything you release polling wise, there's going to be some people who are going to be happier and some who are going to be uh, unhappier when you talk about the results being disseminated. Sure. So why don't you give us the numbers, uh, you know, starting you know, with the, uh, the two at the top and, yeah. and John Fleming third, uh, but basically in a, in, a, in a virtual tie? Yes. So on the ballot test, uh, Fleming and Campbell are tied at 15 apiece. Fleming is at 14. Fayard at 12 and Kennedy is at 11. And so you basically have a very tight bunching of those candidates. I also went ahead and went a step further. Now that the Senate race has started to heat up, I've asked the undecideds who they're leaning towards, or as I affectionately call it, the leaner question. And so if you include the people in the ballot test, plus those undecideds who are leaners in one way or another, the numbers don't change substantially, but what happens is that Campbell and Bustani now have 17 apiece. Fleming goes from 14 to 15. Kennedy moves up from 11 to 13, and Fayard st stays at 12. So what you're talking about is a tightly bunched group of five candidates, each of whom could plausibly make the runoff right now. Okay, so what was controversial or somewhat controversial? So the controversial part, of course, is number one, that uh, Kenny fell so much. Number two, the fact that Fleming has risen quite a bit. Okay. And because this is really the full, it's kind of interesting. The scuttlebutt from a week ago on LA politics was that several candidates had noted that Fleming was rising in the polls. And the poll that I released Monday morning was the first one to put numbers behind that scuttlebutt. So of course, you know how it goes, whenever you're showing a poll, there's going to be, to quote Clancy Dubose, the winners and the losers. Sure. And in doing so, the people whose numbers are falling, of course, will be upset. And then those whose numbers are rising or are in a strong position are doing quite well or happy with the results. Okay. So, um, yes, I wrote a column and uh, I, I talked about the poll. And the one thing that I noted uh, was that when I looked at John Fleming's website, uh, there's an article on the site, and there was no mention that he paid for the poll. Yes. So, I mean, with yeah, the, yeah. So my attitude about to, that is, you know, there's what Fleming did with the poll, and there is what I have done when asked specifically who paid for the poll. And of course, I believe in. I'm a believer in full, full transparency on these kind of things. So that's just the way I look at it is, you know, since unfortunately John Fleming doesn't work for me, I can't tell him to mention it was a commission poll, but I made sure as a pollster, because I got multiple inquiries from reporters about that, who paid for this poll. And of course I told him there was a Fleming poll. So the way I look at it is I make sure to do the maximum amount of transparency I can do and you know, I do. I focus on what I can control. Okay. So when, when you post a poll, um, are you obligated to say, okay, well, I'm, this is commissioned and paid for by a particular person or a group of people, or is that something that 
say, the, uh, the person who is paying for it, or both? The way I look at it is this. I think what is good practice is if it is a poll that is commissioned by someone, you say so. And some people don't care about who commissioned it, some who do, and those who do, of course, are typically reporters. And the instant they ask me, I tell them, I see this as kind of a similar kind of thing as to if you have these nebulous quote unquote subscribers who are paying for a poll, mm -hmm. who are those subscribers? So I, I look at it this way. I disclose the most I reasonably can and let the chips fall as they may. Okay. Let, let, let me just make an argument. Uh, the, the, and I, I fully understand what you're saying about the subscribers. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe like for example, John Georges has, uh, uh, some subscribers with uh, the Kennedy Group and yes. uh, Pinsonet also, and we we certainly uh, have uh, published his poll as well as uh, Vernon Kennedy's poll, and they had different subscribers who didn't have any particular base. It wasn't paid for by one particular person, but this mm -hmm. one was. So I'm just wondering whether or not they, you both have an obligation. Is there something that you know is a, a, some kind of polling? Um, organization that says, okay, in this type of situation, this is what you're supposed to do. I was full and transparent with my disclosure, and that, of course, is what got published on various new media outlets. Okay, okay. So, um, 